welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Sean. I'm back for another video. In this video today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a letter that was sent to me from one of you. But before I get into all of that, if you're brand new to my channel and you like love and relationship advice videos, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, go ahead and hit that notification bell while you're at it if you're already a subscriber. But yeah, I'm going to jump right into the letter in just a minute. But in case you're new here, you may not know it, but I'm actually a life and dating coach and I'm the author of three books. The first one's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. My my second book, Breaking the Man Code, The Key to Unlocking His Heart, and my third book, Getting Unstuck, How to Create the Life You've Always Wanted to Live. They're all available on Amazon, Kindle, and BarnesandNoble.com. And if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one as your personal life and dating coach, send me an email to itscoachshawn at gmail.com. That's itscoachshawn, S-H-A-W-N, at gmail.com. That's also where you're going to send your letter for a chance to have it featured in my upcoming video. So now without any further ado, let's go get them. Hi Sean, I love your vids and you have been an inspiration to me for the last few years. I'm 29 going on 30, recently broke up with this guy, just turned 30, who is a part-time master's student with two minimum wage jobs, works a total of 24 to 28 hours a week. We met online and instantly got on, so I thought. Uh, we would meet for days twice a week, message throughout the day, and call each other every other day despite our busy schedules. However, after three weeks of dating, he was hinting at exclusivity. Girl, I hinted no. <laughs> then he directly asked me about exclusivity and in five weeks I asked him to slow down then at eight weeks I still said that I needed to get to know him more and let him know what I wanted for us and for him to do my standards before I would be happy to be in a relationship with him he seemed to understand but a week later he was introducing me as his girlfriend without me agreeing to it that we were even in a relationship but I let it go and thought I really like his company and we have fun together so I'll just roll with it he is way better than my last relationship and my ex but things seemed to go downhill from there after he pushed the title on me, he became cheap with his time. Canceled at the last minute for no emergency reasons, i.e. needing to complete an assignment that was due in four weeks. He's also very stingy with his money. He claimed he never wears designer when I told him how my father would provide money for my mother to buy us designer things, yet every single item that he has is designer. He also refused to get me cider and got me beer instead, saying it's cheaper, and lectured me about the importance of buying a cheap bottle of wine and sharing it in a group when we were on a double date. I also realized we have never gone out to dinner together. Together. He doesn't believe in wasting money eating out. I realized our dates consisted of drinks and concerts. I didn't even realize this because I'm very social and I typically go out to eat by myself with my friends. Also, I began to realize how weird his relationship was with his best friend. From the very beginning, his friend has always disrupted our chances to get to know each other. A month of seeing him, his friend moved to the country and started living with him, which reduced our time together. He insisted that he needed to hang with his friend, show his friend around, help him find a job, and I thought it was fine because I thought it showed what a good person he is. Is, but it felt weird whenever I would ask about him he would always feel the need to tell me about his friend what his friend was doing how his friend was feeling <laughs> He also attempted to bring his friend on our dates. I refused the first time, he asked. Eventually, we went on double dates, but uh, I felt that made more sense, but not a throuple date. The second and final time, I was caught completely off guard because his friend was at the date venue. Girl, what? I was assured that he'd be leaving soon, but when the friend tried to leave, my ex insisted that he stay. During this date, my ex said, Imagine if all three of us lived together. I promised you, girl, he was dead serious. At this point, I realized how incompatible we were. He lied about some of his beliefs as well, and he's also very cheap. I also am going to be buying a house next year, and I feel as though he was hinting for him and his friend to live with me. When his friend wanted to leave, he decided to leave too. Bear in mind, it was only 9.30 on a Friday. Day. I knew I had to break up with him because being with him began to make my skin crawl because he was not up to my standards. I tried to reaffirm my standards again and asked him to meet in person. I was open to reconciliation but I really wanted to break up with him in person. He canceled on me twice, half an hour before the time we were due to meet. When he tried to rearrange it, he would message me on the day and ask me to meet him in the evening of the same day. I had enough so I broke up with him via text, something I said I would never do and it felt terrible. I wonder if I did the right thing, was I being too hasty should I have been more direct about my standards instead of sitting back and judging him by his actions rather than his words I worry because I've never been in a healthy relationship I took three years out of dating just to work on myself and I feel mostly confident about my decision but there's a small part of me that feels guilty and unsure I know this doesn't quite fit the narrative of most of your strawberry letters and I know most women would be happy with the guy uh, to be officially claiming them and introducing them to their friends but this just felt off was I wrong to break up with him no 
absolutely not. There is so much that I want to talk about in this letter, so I'm going to try to keep it as concise as I possibly can. There are red flags all over this bad boy, but I'm really proud of you that you were mature enough and had the discernment to be able to see these things and that your spidey senses were tingling and you can kind of see, okay, red flags, warnings everywhere. So many things. Number one, when a man is rushing, rushing you to the extent that this man was rushing her, you always have to be careful. Only a couple of weeks, two or three weeks of dating and you already want to be my boyfriend? How do, this isn't about you wanting me. How do I know that I want you after only dating you for two or three weeks? Like what makes you think that that's all it takes is a couple of dates and all of a sudden you're worthy? Like, boy, if you don't stop, no. You always are leery of a man who is rushing you to that extent because is he rushing towards you or is he running away from something or someone? Sometimes people have so many skeletons in their closet, they're, they're living in fear that they'll be exposed at any minute. So they want to rush the relationship along. They got their hand on the closet door where there's an, a wife, an ex-wife, a, a baby's mother. They're living with someone, a relationship, a girlfriend. There's so many things and they don't want you to find out who and what they truly are. So they want to rush you along. I think he wanted to rush things along because he he has plans for you and he can't do that as some dude you're dating but he can get as far as he wants to get if he's your boyfriend that's why that's all he was really about from the very beginning him pushing the friend on you I feel like all of that was has been arranged all of that has been organized they talked about you I don't know if what he's trying to do is get you to like the friends they can possibly enter into a three-way relationship with you that's why this friend is on your dates with you or if he just wants the friend to be able to live with you. I think he mistook you being passive for you being desperate. That's why you want to be very clear about your standards, what you want and what you don't want, and you can't be flexible about that. Like in the beginning you were standing strong. When he was trying to push the boyfriend title on you, you were like, no, I'm not ready. A week later, he asked you again, no, I'm not ready. Then you had a conversation with him about what it will require of him to, for you to be ready. But yet you let him get away with calling you your, his girlfriend and introducing you as such in front of people. So he thought, got her. I wore her down. Same thing with the best friend. You initially said, no, I don't want your best friend with us on a date. But you eventually gave in a little bit when he tried to, he did the little work around. And then he ended up doing a double date with the friend and another girl. And then eventually the, the best friend was waiting for you guys at the venue. Like, I think he thinks he can wear you down. And I think he had his eyes on the big prize. He sounds like he doesn't really want to work and that he's looking for a go-getter. Which to me is the most disgusting characteristic in a man. And that is laziness. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. He works 24 to 28 hours, and that's fine. He also has all these designer things, but somebody is buying it. If it's not him with this little part-time job that he has, maybe his parents are doing it. And I think he wants somebody to pick up where they left off, and that's where you come in. The one with all the ambition, all the drive. The one who's about his age, but about to buy her own house. I think he saw you coming and he thought he could take advantage. He thought that was desperation that he was seeing, but it was really just you being passive. I think in the future, you need to be clear. I don't believe in moving this quickly. See, like you, you kept giving in to the pressure and now he's trying to pressure you with the biggest thing ever, moving in with you and, uh, and his little raggedy friend. And I think that one of the reasons why he wants to be your boyfriend is because he wants what boyfriend access will grant him. Not everybody's afraid to be called a boyfriend, afraid to be called a fiance or even a husband. It's all about if that man is willing to, to, to live up to the standards of those things. I think he wanted what that, what he thought it would grant him. You wouldn't want to live with some random dude you're dating, but you'll live with your boyfriend. I think he's setting that up. You know, some men play the long game. Once you told him that you wanted to buy a house, he started thinking about, man, that'd be nice. Me in the house, yeah. Me, I get my homeboy down here, tell him to move down, tell him I'm dating this girl. She about to do this. Like, some dudes plot on people. And I hate to say it, but some dudes are looking for a woman that will take care of them. And I think that's what he thought he had found in you. I'm not sure it has anything to do with you. I think it really has to do with him being somebody who only wants to work. He got used to this lifestyle of working 24 to 28 hours and going to school and having designer things. He got somebody like you who had money, used to money, and he thinks he can just slide right in. But then he has the nerve to be greedy with it and not just want you to eventually provide for him, but he's also bringing this raggedy friend along. 
I feel like I think you definitely did the right thing by cutting him off, by ending the relationship. Don't feel any kind of regret. He was never really there. He wanted to be your boyfriend and title only. What did he actually do? He didn't woo you. He didn't take you out. He was stingy with his money. He was stingy with his time. When a man wants to be with you and a man values you, he'll show you that with everything that he has, with his time, with his money, with his energy, with his space. He'll, he'll try to show you with everything. When a man isn't really giving you anything but asking for all that you have, it's because he's trying to set you up. He's trying to use you. I feel like the whole thing was a setup. Him trying to force the best friend on you, trying to make you like the best friend even though you don't. Like you're trying to get to know him and he's like, you know, my friend's doing this today. He's feeling this today. Got the friend on the dates and all that. Especially when he mentioned, you know, we could all live together. I bet the friend didn't flinch because I feel like they talked about it. They discussed it and they discussed you. The friend was like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, bruh. If I can convince her to be my girlfriend and I can move in her, man, you good. I think they had that kind of conversation behind your back. I think they think that you're a sucker. And they think they think that you were desperate. All because you, you, you only seemed that way because you were being passive. But I think you surprised him when you broke up with him. He's like, man, I thought I had her. I hinted about the relationship she gave in. I hinted, you know, about letting my friend kick it with us on our date. She gave in. I'm hinted about the house and that ended it. Like, what happened? I think you shocked him. But I feel like in the future, you're going to have to learn to be more direct. Your, your standards aren't flexible. I don't care if he does introduce you to his friends as his girlfriend. You say, excuse me. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, uh-uh, babe. We didn't discuss that yet. So, no, we're just dating for now. And we'll see how it goes. Like, you, you'll stop people. You don't let somebody just say whatever they want to say about you in front of you. No one should ever be rushing you into a relationship or into a level of exclusivity that you haven't agreed to, that you haven't asked for, that you don't even want. I think if anybody's ever rushing you, you have to wonder, are you running towards me or are you running from something? That's when you pray your hardest, that God would help to reveal, God, what exactly is he running from? Show me. Show me what I'm not seeing right now because there's something not right about this. But I'm proud of you for stopping it before it got too far. I feel like him and the best friend were setting you up. All right, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Be sure to thumbs up if you did. I also would love to hear your thoughts and opinions below in the comment section. So go ahead and let me know what do you think about the situation? Do you agree with me? Do you feel like she's being used? Do you feel like they were setting her up? Was it innocent? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on life and love, consider purchasing one of my books. The first one's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. My second book, Breaking the Man Code, The Key to Unlocking His Heart. And my third book, Getting Unstuck, How to Create the Life You've Always Wanted to Live. They're all available on Amazon, Kindle, and BarnesandNoble.com. And if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one as your personal life and dating coach, send me an email to itscoachshawn at gmail.com. That's itscoachshawn, S-H-A-W-N, at gmail.com. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Till next time. Later, divas and dudes. Deuces, honey.